Tomorrow is the last day of classes for Seattle Public Schools. And for kids, it means no more early mornings, no more homework, and a lot more free time. However, transitioning from the school routine to a summer schedule can sometimes be a little tricky. And here to help make this season of change a little easier is Marcel Waldman. Marcel is a mom, a former educator, and the founder of Feel Links. Thank you so much for coming to New Day today. Thank you, and it's so nice to get to meet you. Yes, me too. <laughs> right back at yes. you. When I was reading Feel Links, and I don't know if everyone at home might know what that means, can you, before we get into our tips, can sure. you explain that? Sure. So Feel Links came out of being a teacher and just really wanting to create something hands on for kids that could be a tool to check in with feelings, open those communications at home, also in our classrooms with our teachers, and knowing that where our kids' emotions are is so important for us to know and understand. And so I created these little plush emotion dolls and they're really for communicating feelings, kind of using them for play, also using them for like morning meetings in the classroom where kids can really start growing their understanding and gaining vocabulary for more words so we know better how our children are feeling. Um, and then I created a journal that goes along with that. And then my daughter and I, which we were um, here on the show talking about our children's book called Feel Trip, A Journey Through Ordinary Emotions, which is really just about we all feel all kinds of emotions. It's normal and they're valid. And um, yeah, so even part of, you know, kicking off summer and just checking in with our kids. So so important and being able to journal that's such a good idea if they don't feel comfortable maybe coming one-on-one -on -one, but yes. you could maybe like poke into the journal and see how they're feeling and then For open sure. up the conversation i think that yes that is such a good idea okay and you have other tips that parents should be doing right now yes. tip number one hold a family meeting and get organized tell yes. me about this so we always kick off summer with a family meeting. What are the expectations? Okay. What are the rules? What are the things that are non-negotiables maybe? <laughs> <laughs> maybe there's chores involved, which we'll talk about, but um, just getting organized, getting a calendar together, talking about what are the things we have to look forward to? Maybe our children are going off to camp. What are the things you need to leave for camp in the morning? Or maybe our children are going to summer school. So is it a water bottle? What snacks does our kiddos like? Let's get organized and get those things in the house. Um, you know, sunscreens, water bottles, all the things that might need to go off on the day with our, with our children. And also put a calendar in a visible place because it's so good even if they're not necessarily reading yet but just this idea of like things go on a calendar and then that's kind of how we can um, help them understand maybe how those executive functioning skills work when we're getting organized for things so really sit down no distractions no phones, no things, <laughs> unless we're maybe flipping through those calendars, but right. really just no distractions and sitting down and having a family meeting about those expectations and what it's gonna look like. That is such a good tip. And I love like a visual calendar too. I feel like I always have to have one like at work old school there and on like the fridge. It's With just, you. it keeps yes. me going. Yes. Okay, along those same lines too, tip number two, maintaining a routine. Yes. So I think when it comes to summertime, we need to kind of think of that routine with flexibility, right? So while one sort of outweighs the other sometimes, we need to remember that as our mornings are starting, maybe we're letting our teens sleep in a little bit, but we also wanna make sure that they're getting up, they're enjoying the day, whatever that looks like for them, or they're getting up extra early because they're heading off to um, camp or they're going off to summer school, as I said, um, and making sure that bedtime is also an important part, even though mm -hmm. the sun is setting later and it's lighter out. And there are special occasions where our kids stay up later. But if we can maintain some routine of making sure we're getting a healthy breakfast in, making sure that we are um, you know, getting our self-care in as a child, right? Just maintaining some of that will really help with keeping things smooth in the morning, getting out the door if you need to get out, as working parents, being able to get to our meetings on time. So just setting up for success in you know, getting those Again, flexible routines, but keeping some structure to 
to our days and our evenings. Definitely some stability, some structure, well, we all I, need that. I just have to add to it. <laughs> so in our house, what we do is we have a um, must do and then a want to list. So our must do is like my son <laughs> may wanna just get up and turn on the TV or play a video game. Well, instead it's making sure that we are getting up brushing teeth, putting on clothes, <laughs> getting, you know, whatever the day may call for, but making sure all of those must do's are done, which includes maybe a daily chore. Um, and also for my kids, it's getting outside. It might be taking the new puppy for a walk. It might be getting their softball and baseball player, so getting some swings in. And I, I notice the mental health will um, look a lot better for our kids if we get them kind of moving in the morning, if all they really want to do is kind of be sedentary on a couch. <laughs> so, And on that note, limiting screen time then is probably important. Yes. So we in our home have certain rules already, but I think too, when summer comes, those sort of kind of not go out the window, but things change. There's more time to maybe sit on screens or have family movie nights, which are really important and fun. Um, but just making sure that there are parameters. So what are those um, setting limits and also setting some like screen free zones? Maybe that's, well, for sure, for, <laughs> that is the dinner table. Um, maybe it's during that family movie night. There's no phones for anyone, my husband, myself, our kids, you know, and they're put away somewhere so that this is, we're focusing, we're enjoying time together, even watching a movie, but putting away those phones and just setting those limits so that our kids understand and, and why. Why are we setting those limits? Well, because we have more time in our day now, but we don't wanna be just, just staring at your screens. phone, no. Yeah. And I wanna get to this too, obviously there's other tips, getting outside like you said and planning outings, but encouraging independence, I thought that yes. was pretty great. I think that's a really big one, no matter what age our kids are, right? So maybe they're not able to quite yet get the sunscreen on you know, appropriately and we can come in and help, but making sure that those things are getting done, making sure that they're understanding that the helmet is going on if they wanna go on a little you know, bike ride if that's an appropriate thing in their neighborhood. So not only letting them play independently, set up, maybe you wanna go get some crafts or something for the child to do. Maybe it's um, drawing in a journal or writing. And we'll be right back. Thank you.